Hi guys, my name is Melissa with Golian Hempstead and welcome to my kitchen. Today I have been working all day in my kitchen. I had the day off work. I've been canning, so I kind of have a mess behind me, but I decided I was going to go ahead and shoot this video and show you what I was going to do for dinner. So I am going to make a quick meatloaf that I'm going to be able to shove in the oven real quick about the time that my husband texts me and says he's coming home. So I am going to start with um, my food processor. I always use the food processor when I make my meatloaf. I don't know why, but I like everything just like really like tight and conformed in my food processor, like just all mashed together. I like my breadcrumbs to be really, really um, blended well, I guess. And so I've always, this is how I do my meatloaf. It's worked great for me for a while. And I work full time and have this YouTube channel. And so I have to do something that's going to work really great and fast and quick. So, um, so what I'm going to start with is I last night threw these bread, um, leftover sourdough bread in my food dehydrator to make breadcrumbs. So this is a great way to probably uh, don't need to use all of them. Probably that's a, that's about, that's probably about all I'm going to need. But it's a great way to use your leftover bread. So if you are making sourdough or even yeast bread and you're getting ready to make another loaf, you have like a stale loaf left over, just slice it up. I cut it up into small chunks, put it in my dehydrator and let it go for about two to two or three hours at, I think it was 125 is what I did it. So, and then I get a really nice firm breadcrumb and then you can just throw them in a mason jar and keep them for when you need um, for Thanksgiving dinner or when you need something like meatballs or a meatloaf is a great way to use them. So we're going to start by just kind of blending together our breadcrumbs. And you can tell, you can tell these breadcrumbs are nice and dry and toasted. Okay, so I've got my breadcrumbs in there. And we don't, my husband cannot stand like red peppers or green peppers. He's, they don't agree with him. He doesn't like them. And so we don't typically don't put any kind of peppers in our meatloaf, but I do like to put onion in my meatloaf, but I don't have any fresh onion anymore because my onions started to kind of turn on me that we grew last year. So what I did is I sliced up all of my onion and I froze all of my onions. So I've got onions that I'm going to throw in here from my freezer. They're going to cook up just fine because by the time they cook, they'll cook all the water out of it and they'll be great. So I've got onions. I've got about a cup of onions left over from our dinner last night. And I normally just freeze them in like containers like this. I'm going to throw it in there. And normally that is about two cups is normally so typically when I'm cooking I'll just like empty half of this if I need a cup of onion or a small onion half of one of these and then stick the other half in this freezer because I have two freezers out in the garage and this is what I use to cook with so I don't have fresh onion this time of year in the winter time in my home we have frozen garlic and frozen onion the other thing I have is I have some frozen garlic I can throw in there that I have left over as well now, last year, our garlic really didn't do that well. Um, we grew spring garlic, and it was okay, and we ate it before the end of the, I mean, we ate it by, like, September. It was all gone. So the last, about two months ago when I ordered my Azure Standard Order, I went ahead and got some garlic from them, and maybe even longer than that, and it started to, it started to sprout on us. So we decided at that time we should probably go ahead and, peel it and freeze it. So I've got my Azure standard garlic. I've got a bunch of these little plastic containers out in my garage um, in the freezer that I use also for things like this. Now, most people only put two cloves of garlic, but I like a lot of garlic, so I'm gonna put four cloves of garlic in today. And then I'm gonna throw a couple of eggs. Now we don't have chickens, but we do have um, Aldi down the street that sells their eggs. And their eggs um, actually come from a farmer here in Indianapolis. 
which is, or in Indiana. We're in Indianapolis. It lives in, this is in Indiana. And it is a farm that is in, um, oh, actually, it's not in Indiana. It's in Illinois. I was thinking it was Indiana. But local, it's a local, it's not too far away. Illinois is not very far away from us at all. And so right now, until I can find somebody that has farm eggs near me, this is where I purchase my eggs. Um, I have a goal to have chickens one day, but all right, Joy won't let us have chickens. So we, if you don't know, we are homesteading on a quarter acre lot in a neighborhood. So we decided to start homesteading about, oh, a couple years ago. We, maybe even three years ago, we moved into our house and we built our first garden which we used to garden at our old home. And then when we were younger, we gardened a whole lot, but it just felt like we kind of got away from that as our kids got older and now we're getting back to it and we're just really, really enjoying it. So now we have three pretty good sized gardens out in our yard. We have garlic, winter garlic going right now. And it is, it's up about this tall. So I'm pretty sure we're in July, we're gonna have some really good garlic. I've got about 70 cloves out there, so we should have plenty of fresh garlic to cook with throughout the next season and into next winter, so I'm excited about that. But our goal was is really just to homestead right here. We're learning as much as we can. We're doing as many things as we can. And then our goal eventually is to move out. Uh, we have a winery business, and that is our plan is to homestead and have a winery on a piece of property in retirement. So that is a goal that we're working for right working on right now. Most people that are homesteading are not empty nesters, but Steve and I are, and this is what we're kind of our goal and kind of what we're working towards right now. So I will have chickens one day. <laughs> Just not here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start by, um, or kind of my next step is I'm going to blend this together. Now normally I only put normally I only put two eggs in there, but sometimes I find after I add the meat, I need to add a little bit more liquid. So I could either add a little beef broth or add some more egg to actually kind of blend that together. So what we'll do now is I'm just going to cut open um, my ground beef. And of course we buy from a local farmer. So we have all of our, um, we have a cow that we got butchered. Um, we went in with somebody else and all of our meat is out in our freezer. And I buy very little meat from the store. Sometimes I buy pork, um, but most of the time, sometimes I buy pork, but most of the time I, uh, either buy part of a pig and or part of a cow and just keep it out in our freezer. So we'll go ahead and blend this together. While this is blending together, I'm going to grab my barbecue sauce. <laughs> You can see it's not really moving too much in there right now because it needs a little bit more fluid liquid so this is my victorian barbecue sauce that i just made it was made from rhubarb that was in our freezer i found that recipe in the ball cooking or the ball canning uh, um, book i actually have two different ball canning books but i bought the really good one that ever i don't have it sitting right here the really good one that everybody has I hadn't had, I had that one. I had another one that I was using and I really wanted it because it looked like it was bigger and it had more in it. Well, they had a Victorian barbecue sauce in there and it was, the base of it was not tomato. It was rhubarb and it is fantastic. It is so good. I have not made my meatloaf with this barbecue sauce before, but usually I use my tomato based barbecue sauce that I make and can. So this time I'm going to go ahead and use this Oh, it smells so good. It's got like molasses, I think, and um, brown sugar. It's so delicious. I'm very excited about um, using it because when I made it, my husband and I tried, I'm going to put about a cup in there. We tried it just by the spoon. Mm. 
Oh yeah, it's so good. But we haven't really used it on any foods yet. So I'm gonna put it in the in the meatloaf and then I'm gonna spread it over the top of the meatloaf. This thing needs a little bit of help. Okay. So this is nice and mixed now. It looks great. I'm going to just take a little bit of olive oil. Actually, I have a spray bottle here of olive oil. If you don't have one of these, this is a great little gizmo I got off Amazon and I just put olive oil in it. I don't like like spam pan or is it Pam spray? I don't really like it because there's a lot of um, bad things for you in there. Every time I read the side of it, it's got like stuff that I don't even know what it, what it is. <laughs> so I don't like it. So I just use olive oil. Um, you could use coconut oil, um, avocado oil. You could use any of those things if you'd like. Probably don't necessarily have to have oil because um, your meatloaf probably has enough fat in it that it wouldn't really stick to your pan. But it just makes me feel a little bit better about, about that. So I'm just going to Put that together, just kind of form that together like a loaf. You can see how super easy this is. I've not really had to do very much work at all. I've just basically thrown my hamburger, my barbecue sauce, garlic, onion, and my breadcrumbs in there. The other thing I've used in the past is oatmeal, and oatmeal is a great thing too. So if you don't have breadcrumbs, you can absolutely throw oatmeal in there. You can throw like half to a cup of oatmeal for a pound of ground beef. And I done didn't put any other salt or pepper in it because the barbecue sauce has got some seasoning in it. It's Victorian barbecue sauce. And then we put a garlic and onion in there and so that's going to season that up well too. So let me wash my hands real quick. Okay. And now I'm just going to take this barbecue sauce and put over the top of my Meatloaf. I'm probably going to put most of it just because um, the one thing that happens when you're an empty nester is that you end up having extra food left over that sometimes can go to waste. So I typically only can can things that actually are good for Steve and I. So. For instance, when I canned our sausage for our pizza, I canned them in jelly jars because they're just enough. This is still kind of hot. That's why the lid's on it. There's just enough in there for the two of us with no waste. So normally with some of my sauces, I will do like pints, half pints, and then quarter pints. So I have like three different sizes of sauces. So depending on what I use it for, um, I won't have much waste. So, but I think this is going to be good because we kind of like, we kind of like a lot of sauce on our, on our, um, meatloaf anyway. And it's typically not dry at all, but it really, it isn't, even though we didn't, we put two eggs in there and about, um, I think we said about a cup of maybe half a cup, three quarters of a cup, probably three quarters of a cup of barbecue sauce inside of it. So not super dry, but it actually just kind of coats it really well. Put it in the oven at 375 for about 45 minutes, and then you're done. We'll show you what it looks like when we get done. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and set my oven for 375. So when that gets done heating up, we'll stick it in the oven, and then we'll go on to the next part of our dinner. I decided that for my side dish tonight that I was going to do a butternut squash. So I have about five butternut squashes squash left from my garden this year. It is January and these 
these babies will last you through an entire season. I mean, they're just as solid as can be. I am just always surprised at how long a butternut squash will last me. So I, um, I am going to go ahead and cut into this. Look, still looks great. It's got some great color. And what we're going to do is we're going to roast butternut squash tonight for dinner. Um, I think now you can, um, I think I've read before that if you want to eat the peel, you can. I believe that is the case. We don't ever do that. That's not something that we really enjoy. But we um, we lo really love sweet potatoes. But the thing is, is sweet potatoes, at least in our house, we've never grown them. But when we've bought them, have not lasted near as long as butternut squash. I mean, even if you buy a butternut squash at the grocery store, it's going to last you a really long time. So that's the kind of great thing about butternut squash, and it tastes to us very similar to sweet potatoes, and so that is why we grow it. Um, and we grow about, well, this year we only planted one plant. Last year we planted two, and we got so many butternut squash and spaghetti squash, I was giving it away. But we had a major issue with squash bugs this year, and so really did not get as many butternut squash and, or spaghetti squash as we usually do. Honestly, we only got about three spaghetti squash, and last year we had an abundance of, of spaghetti squash. So um, this year we are planning on growing some delicata squash, is one of the squashes that we're growing. We're going to grow a butternut squash, um, maybe, maybe spaghetti squash. I'm kind of getting away from spaghetti squash. It still is a little, I, I, I try, I do like it, but it's still a little bit mushier. To me than I would like for it to be. And um, then we're going to grow a um, buttercup, I think, is the other squash that maybe we were going to grow. And then also the new squash that we're going to grow, which is not edible, is a loofah squash. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to try to grow enough loofahs to get us for at least another year to use either in our kitchen or the shower. But mostly for the kitchen is what I was thinking. So I am excited about that. So I saw somebody use this trick online and I've not tried it before. So I'm gonna try and using a canning lid to scoop out my seeds. And oh my gosh, that is just phenomenal. It is working way better than a spoon. Now, if you're a gardener and you're gardening your own I don't know that you can do this with the grocery store because, you know, sometimes they actually don't use the same types of plants as what, or same type of seeds as what you can save, or they do something to stunt the growth, I think, to, I've heard that. I don't even know if that's true. But if you are a gardener, um, or are you thinking about having a garden, and someone gives you their squash, you can actually save these seeds for the next year. So I'm going to take these seeds, I'm going to get a bowl, and I'm going to save them. I'm going to dry them, I'm going to wash them off, and then just let them dry at room temperature until they're good and dry, and then save them. I might even try to grow this same seed this year. I'm not really sure if it'll be dry enough. And also, I probably have some seeds that I already need to use. So that oven is ready for the meatloaf, but we're not quite ready for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep the oven on for right now probably going to make the squash first anyway. So I am just going to take my squash and cut it in bite-sized pieces. Now you can put this on a uh, cookie sheet if you would like. Um, you can put it on a, in a, like a nine by 13 inch pan. You can kind of do whatever you want. There's lots of things that you can do with butternut squash. It's a great staple for soups as well. But like I was saying a little while ago, we think it tastes a lot like sweet potato. So we just, um, what I just do is I just slice it up or cut it up in chunks and um, roast it like roasted carrots or potatoes in the oven. And that seems to keep us pretty content. It actually, like I said, um, lasts longer than a sweet potato in your cupboard. So in, in, you don't even have to have a cold room to keep this stuff, to keep this stuff good. It literally will stay good even in a warmer room. I actually store these in a basket in my laundry room. That room gets kind of warm and I have yet to have one go bad. So 
and you can see this is pretty crisp as I'm cutting through it. Um, so we started to plan our garden for next year and in planning my garden or this year really not next year it's actually this year in planning my garden I never seem to have enough garden space I always feel like I want just one more garden but I think I'm gonna just try to stick with just the three gardens that we have <laughs> in in our little urban um, our urban community so uh, we are going to do let me see I think we have four squash plants three are winter squash plants a loofah plant and then one is going to be summer squash and then we have some uh, tomatoes of course the garlic I talked about onions uh, spinach um, six different types of peppers lots of herbs we have an herb we're actually going to extend our herb garden so I guess really we have four gardens because we have three vegetable gardens and an herb garden and um, and some more teas this year so I am excited to see what that is all going to turn out to, to be like so so what I'm going to do tonight is I literally cannot stand cleaning my cookie sheet I it's just the biggest pain for me I just don't like it so I'm going to put this in a glass uh, baking dish which works fine as well. I'm sure you guys are giggling at me, but it's just how I am. <laughs> so just going to spray this, and I'm just going to throw my squash into my dish here. Oh, it smells so good. It literally smells like I just picked it out of the garden. I just, sometimes I'm just so shocked at how long it lasts. It's just one of those great vegetables that it's so versatile you can you can make um you can use it to make pie too if you wanted to do a sweet pie or if you want to do like a sweet potato you could actually um roast it and then you could throw some brown sugar and um olive oil and some brown sugar and cinnamon on it and then roast it it would be so good that way too but we are just going to go with some olive oil tonight and i've got my olive oil container here and I typically don't put salt and pepper on it my husband normally will do that once he gets it on his plate but I'm not a big um, salt person just because of my health so I don't actually add a lot of salt to most of the foods that I cook so we will be back here in a little bit I'll throw these in the um, oven and then I'll show you guys exactly how it turned out okay so I decided while I was waiting for my food to cook, I decided that I was going to go ahead and work on my, my seeds. And I thought, well, I'll just show you guys what I did. So I'm just going to lay a paper towel out here. What I did is I took my salad spinner. I've got this really handy dandy salad spinner. If you've not seen one of these, it works like this. And it stores, I always have a hard time with closing it, but it stores with this thing kind of over on its side. So it's fantastic. Um, but honestly, I have a hard time always figuring out how I'm supposed to um, turn it. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole other story. But um, what I did was I cleaned out all of my um, seeds out of the flesh of the butternut squash. It didn't take very long. There's still a little bit of flesh left, but you can see just out of one butternut squash how many seeds I got. So it's... It's a lot of seeds. I'm going to bring it closer so you guys can see. I mean, that's a lot of seeds. And it only takes like, like one or two seeds to do a plant. I normally put two seeds um, and then about 18 inches apart. I think it's about 18 inches. I do another two seeds. So this is going to serve me well for many years. So I am, what I'm going to do is lay them out on this paper towel and on this cutting board. And I'm just going to let them dry probably for about a week or so. I'll be able to tell when they're nice and dry. Um, there is a way, you can look it up online, there's a way to find out if your seeds are viable um, by floating them in water. So you can look that up if you'd like. Um, sometimes I do that with my seeds. Other times I just, I'm gonna do a planting video here in a couple months. I'll just plant extra seeds and see if they actually germinate and then we'll know if they're good or not. If they don't germinate, then I know that they're not a good seed. But if they germinate, they should be good. So I've not had problems with that in the past. I have, sometimes I have problems when I buy seeds from, in a seed packet. Some will germinate and some will not. It's the same thing with this. So I'm just going to let those sit out and dry for about a week. 
And then once I know that they're good and dry, I might even switch the paper towel in a day or so just to make sure that the water continues. It doesn't sit in a wet paper towel. And then I'll just put it in a seed packet. I actually have little seed envelopes that I save my seeds. And it's like you never have to buy butternut squash seeds again. Buy one packet and get the seeds and um, dry them out like this. And you're good to go for really here on out if you continue to do that every year. So thought I would show you this. Dinner's not quite ready, but we'll be back shortly to show you what the end result looked like. And while you're waiting, if you don't mind, go ahead and like and subscribe to Golian Homestead. That will help our channel grow. Okay, you guys, I'm back. I ended up putting my meatloaf in the bottom oven after all, um, just on warm to keep it warm. But it's really um, about ready to come out. So I'm just going to show you what it turned out and looks like. It turned out great. You can see it kind of caramelized around the edges. Looks great. I'm very happy with it. So I'm going to stick that over here on the stove. And meanwhile, what I've been doing is actually kind of mixing up the, um, mixing up the squash. And it is nice and soft. It looks good. But what I'm looking for is for it to like kind of caramelize and grit crispy on top. So I'm going to show you what it looks like now because um, I'm getting ready to end my video, but I just want to show you how we're starting to get some of that crispies on top. Looks great. So I actually um, cooked it for 45 minutes, and then I popped the broiler on high, and it's been going for about five minutes. I normally cook it for like seven to eight minutes on high, or whenever it gets kind of that caramely kind of crispiness on top. It really tastes so much better when you get it that way, if you like that. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope you come back to see us soon. Remember that we are Golian Homestead and we would love for you to like and follow us to help our channel grow. Hope you're having a great evening. Bye.